Hello everyone, and welcome back to Monsters of the Mind. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G. Today, we're talking about another Greek snake woman, because Greece had a lot of snake women, I've noticed. Seems like everyone in Greek mythology became a snake woman. But whatever, that's besides the point. Today, we're talking about Lamia. Lamia means large throat, possibly. Like a lot of monsters, her name origin is kind of debated, so, uh, whatever. She was an individual. She started out good, but, uh, due to a certain thing that happened I'll be talking about later, she was kind of forced into becoming malevolent. She lived in Libya, and she comes from Greek mythology. The two major depictions of Lamia either show her as having the lower half of a snake, or having her head on top of what can only be described as the body of a reptilian lion. I genuinely don't know how to describe uh, this form in any other way. It was said that Lamia was once the beautiful queen of Libya. Unfortunately, she was an attractive woman in an ancient Greek story. So, Zeus happened. And when Hera found out about this, she made Lamia a hideous monster with an appetite for children as a form of revenge. Lami ended up slaughtering all of her own children, and she only wanted to eat children ever since. Oh, and as an extra bonus cherry on top, Hera gave her permanent insomnia. But Zeus took pity on her, so he gave her both the ability to see the future and the ability to remove her eyeballs. Due to her nature as a child eater, she ended up becoming the ancient Greek equivalent of the boogeyman, where parents would tell their kids stories about how Lamia would eat them if they disobeyed them. Later on, Lamia ended up becoming a sort of seductress, similar to a succubus. Basically, she would lure young men of her alleged beauty before she devoured them. Not, uh, not much else to say here, let's move on. Vincent's still not really in the mood to talk. I'm trying to get the others to cheer him up, though. Hi-ho, Vincent! It's me, Pinocchio! I'm your good friend, and you need to cheer up! You know, that's kind of disrespectful, since Pinocchio died at Grayscale back in 97. Oh, 18 or 19? 19! Oh, jeez, sounds like this was a pretty big deal for you. I went to his funeral, you insensitive jerk! Oh, um, I could dance? You, you want me to do a dance for you? Alright, that is it! No, 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 Vincent, wait, it was just a joke! <laughs> it was just a joke! Moving on, let's look at the card. This is yet another card that I don't have much to say about. You know, if I'm being honest, I expected this series to be a lot more inaccurate than it turned out to be. This is card 97, and I've only really given low scores to, like, a handful of cards. These cards are a lot more mythologically accurate than I was anticipating. I was expecting these to be the definition of pop mythology, have no idea what they're talking about, always making claims that I have no idea what their source is. But no, for a lot of these, they're actually pretty good. So yeah, I was not expecting this when I first went into this series. And this card is no exception. I can't really find any problems here. Unless I get really, really nitpicky. So yeah. So yeah, 10 out of 10. I don't feel like researching pop culture today. So I guess that's all for this episode of Monsters of the Mind. When we talk about Spider-Man's mythological cousin, or relative, something like that. I don't know. See you next time. Ow, I hurt, I hurt. Well, maybe you won't be so disrespectful next time. Oh no, I think I'm seeing the light. See, right over there, it's the light. Hey, I can see it too. What is that? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's a genie! I've been waiting for this moment for like 25 years now! Oh wait, I'm only 23. Um, uh, okay, so, uh, forget that. Uh, uh, okay, for my first wish, I wish that, um... Whoa! Beat it! I need to talk to her. Besides, she wouldn't even understand you. She only speaks Arabic. And Chinese for some reason. Uh, Vincent, what are you doing? I'm speaking with her mentally. That's universal. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, this is not good. Apparently, he has control of a genie. Oh, big deal. Yeah, genies are so scary. What's he gonna do? I is he gonna sing a song? Is he gonna j is he gonna make a parade for us? Is he gonna help us trick a princess? 
Is he going to make references to things that don't exist yet? Is he going to sound like Homer Simpson suddenly due to a breach of contract? And then he's going to sound like Homer Simpson for a while until he sounds like himself again. But that's only for a single movie. Then he sounds like Homer Simpson again for the rest of time, especially after 2014. So now he can never sound like himself again. Then he's going to be then he's going to sound like Will Smith because why not? You know, just as an example. I don't think you understand. Uh, you see, uh, he has the genie of the lamp. And, uh, he is kind of our equal in terms of power. Our? Yeah. He is just as powerful as me and the boogeyman. His only restriction is that he can't directly kill people. Wait, so you can grant wishes? Well, he's equal to our true form's power. Anyway, this is pretty bad. We did not anticipate a genie attack. Well, oh, come on, Vincent. We have our own genie right here. Why can't we just wish that none of this ever happened and I never found that gem and took it out of the underworld or something? Eh, <sighs> that wouldn't work. You see, both me and him are kind of disconnected from the flow of time, so even if you changed history to make sure neither one of us existed, we would still kind of exist due to the nature of our powers. Ah, oh, come on, the one good idea I've ever had, and it won't even work. Anyway, if he has a genie under his control, we need, to, we need to seriously fortify. Oh boy, more building! I love building. This is a job for Mr. G, and I'll see all of you next time to find out how this thrilling conclusion ends in about eight more episodes. Bye!